today is the continuation of last week's Design It seminar, and we are going to, uh, this is going to be session four, we're going to do question and answers, but before we get there, we're going to pick up, uh, we didn't quite get through the session last time, so we're picking up right around here, and we're going to go forward with that thousand square foot building that we spoke of. Hopefully you all designed and built your whole thousand square foot building during the last week in your spare time. Uh, then we'll talk about passive solar, some building science, climate style, indoor, outdoor, and then we'll go through about uh, 10 questions I think there are. We talked about phases of design last time and the circle of planning and we're really going to key here on the architectural part and I showed you this mind map which I think is a good way to sort of think about design and, and how things interact. You may be working on the architectural and then come back and look at your site plan and say well you know this architectural has to be tweaked this way or that way to take advantage of the site specific site characteristics. We talked about building types, a number of different building types. For architectural plans your basic beginning starts with the floor plans which literally are what, what it says, you know, the actual floor plans, one for each floor, first floor, second floor. The mechanical plan or the structural plan has many pages of structural details. You'll get a, a big sheet and it's divided up in I don't know, four or five rows and columns and each one has a, a detail. Okay, so having said that, let's get back to our thousand square foot house. Homework that we talked about. What's green? You might ask what's green. Here's the little house that I designed. Obviously very contemporary and unique. And, and you might ask what is green about this house? Well, first floor is going to be sort of a kitchen and a great room. That's as simple or as difficult as the circle planning got. Now here's the actual plan. Another thing to think about is draw scale furniture into your plan. That's a sofa, a couple chairs, tables. If you, uh, It's a great idea to get some basic drafting equipment, some tracing paper, and it's all about shading. So I'm going to plug in here my longitude and latitude, which is 119 west and 34 north. Now we can look at the time. So that was 2 o'clock. So let's see if we wanted to figure out when our window is going to be shaded. And we can also figure this out for a bank of doors or whatever it may be. But you can see here the shadow starts to come into play around 10 in the morning. By 11, it's pretty much all covered and continues all the way past 2 o'clock. So we've got from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. That's covering a good portion of the day, shading that window. You can also click here on this animation, and it'll show you how the Sun sweeps across. Anyway, it's kind of fun to fool around with. And we're going to talk, we're going to also do, I'm going to show you the uh, a SketchUp model of a plan. And Aha. Okay. This is what the page opens up to. All right. Looks like we're in action here. Okay. So this is SketchUp. I won't explain the whole thing if, if you're really interested in SketchUp. I'm no expert on it, but they have a ton of uh, YouTube tutorials that are easy to go through. In about an hour, you can be creating simple buildings and uh, axes. This tool here allows you to rotate the drawing. So you can see after you create the little model, it's really simple to do this. You can, you can look at it underneath there. Anyway, so you can look at it from underneath. 
gopher's point of view, you can look at it from a bird's point of view, airplane, you can come up from behind it, and I'm just whipping my mouse around here. Right, right there, that gives us that uh, summer solstice, when the sun is at its height, right? Noon is going to be the time that it's at its height, so there's my clock, I set it at 12, there's 11.59, We'll make it exactly noon. How's that? Okay. So you can see when the sun on June 21st is shining down, basically all my windows are in shade here. Now, let's look at that throughout the year. In January, when the sun is at a very low angle at noon, the windows on this side here are still shaded, but the windows on the northeast have a little bit of sunlight on them. And then we'll take it right from February through December and it'll show you that's the shadow line at noon at any point during the year. But the point of this is there are some very simple tools that are free that can help you fine-tune buildings. Bunch of questions that we had this week and this is one that I seem to get a lot. How do I build cheap and green? What's important about buying land? Where can I get training about green building? Have you heard about building with containers? What about building earth ships? Solar system design? How much? I think that sort of goes with cheap green. Green roofs, passive designs, and how do you do a 100% green building? So we'll go through these quickly. Uh, container homes. These are kind of cool. There's a company here. Actually, there's a house in Venice, California, where I used to live, that was just built out of containers. And what these are are shipping containers. It's gotten a lot of attention lately. It's uh, First of all, shipping containers, there's a huge surplus of them. I, I gather there, I think at this point they come from China and they don't go back to China or whatever it is. They're, the shipyards are filled with them and you can get them very cheaply. They're very well built steel containers that they need to be to uh, be stacked on to ships. They're made for being craned. Earth ships, another really cool idea and this lends itself more towards the owner builder kind of guy. But these uh, I saw some of these in Colorado when I took a natural building course know, about 15 years ago. And they're typically built into a hillside. They back up in a hillside with a southern exposure. You can see all this glaze in here. Green roofs was another question. Uh, what about green roofs? How do you do green roofs? This is actually an Apple building here, I think in San Francisco, that, that they put a green roof on. Okay, 100% green. Well, I don't know. How could you... I don't even know if that's a, a, a possible goal. What is 100% green? The earth is 100% green. Probably you'd have to consider a cradle-to-grave study where it did no harm in its production and no harm in its life cycle and then no harm when it was disassembled, right? So that means no, no environmental harm, no energy. We now have uh, the concept of net zero homes that we've talked about, which means a home that produces as much energy as it uses, which is a terrific goal, and that's easily attainable with solar systems. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Please get your questions and comments to me, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much and have a good evening.